Good morning, welcome to Jerusalem, the city of <laughs> kind of skyscrapers, but they make us feel bigger, you know. When man builds something big, it elevates his spirit. And of course, the ultimate building is the Beit HaMikdash, the third temple. And Beit Beit Fila Lekol Amim. God says the house, it, this house is a house of prayer for all the nations. Right? It's important to remember that. This is not an, a Jewish project alone. Right? This is an international revelation for the entire world. Today we're going to learn something that's, uh, you know, it, it's something I'm sorry, I don't learn it every day in my life. And we're in Torah Tzad, Tzadik Dalet 94 of the Kuti Moran. And Rabbi Nachman has been teaching us that the world is built for the Jews. Sounds rather egocentric. But only when you understand that the Jew has a garment that he's given, been given by God. A, a garment of light that makes him different and separate and has responsibility to the Torah, and to the Jewish people, and to humanity. So we carry this garment, and he says, therefore, you can say that the, girl, the world was created for the Jews, but only because we're created to fix it and to repair it and to make beautiful the garments that God gave us in order that the nations will look up and see these Jews. What, they, what do they have? Why are they different? But in a positive way, not a negative way, which has been, uh, unfortunately, oftentimes the case. Now, in, into the first paragraph, the Rebbe says, "Shegad Mishresh Chinato B'Toch Kol Echam Yisrael." That the Jew, every Jew has the Shechina dwelling within him, the divine presence. Nimsa Kol Echam Yisrael Nikra Levush, and every Jew is called a garment. And this Levush, this garment is called honor. He Rabbi Yochanan Omer, Manai Mechabdutai. Rabbi Yochanan said, "My garments are my honor." Now you can wear very simple clothes and be very, look very honorable. And then you can wear very expensive clothes and look very, well, not so honorable. But then we find that if we're carrying God's presence, then to say that the Jews are created for, the God, for God is to say that we're created for the revelation of His presence in this world. In order to bring great goodness to the, the Jewish people, and by virtue of that, to the blessings of Abraham, or to bless all the world through Abraham. When we cannot receive that great goodness, that light, that perfection, that presence, because of our sins, yes, God has suffers with us, as it is says by Yeshayahu. Yeshayahu says, In all their suffering, I suffer. So the Rebbe gives us an insight to this. What does it mean? In all the Jewish suffering, God suffers? Does God have time for the suffering of a few million people when he's got a, a, a galaxies, <laughs> billions of galaxies to deal with? Ah, but rather, understand, why does God have suffering with Jewish suffering, which sins are the biggest suffering of all, it's because the light of the chesed is great and we can't receive it if we have a separation, a partition between us and God. So God's suffering is that He can't give us His light. You know, imagine you're a billionaire and you have no children, no one to give to. Okay, you could give to strangers, fine, it's a good thing, very good. But when you have children and you have grandchildren, you want to give them, and you can't. That's suffering. And it's like that with Hashem, but only on a cosmic level that He wants to give to the Jewish people, and by virtue through that channel, to give to the world. And if we sin, we can't hold the blessing, we can't receive the light. Now He tells us, but the fixing of that great light of kindness is contraction a holy contraction what's a holy contraction how do you contract divine light contract it like you know make orange juice concentrate it's a contraction of the original juice 
That is to say, when you want to give over great goodness, goodness in all its forms, we need to speak. Whoa, wait a minute. If we speak, we create the vessel of receiving the light. And, and by speaking what we want to happen, it will be that way. What is this? This is a form of manifesting in modern uh, parlance, a new age uh, lexicon. The talk of the street, manifest. You man I manifested, oh, he's a big manifester. <laughs> Etc. Well, come on, as is written in Tehillim, but Davar Hashem, with the word of God. Not a nuclear reactor, not a, a, a rocket, not something but the word of God, Shemaim Nasu, God made the heavens. He made the atmospheres of the physical realm and he made the spiritual atmosphere, atmospheres that connect all worlds to the unified field or plane of reality that we call God. And the letters themselves are the contractions, the vessels of contraction. He put his light into the letters of Hebrew. Ad kan ot aleph, ad kan ot taf. Here until this picture is the aleph with a name and a vowel. Until this picture, the letter taf, the first and the last letters he brings here, their shapes and vowels. Uh, and there's other features, obviously, the, the meaning of their names, the weight of the voweling, etc. These are all details, ever refining details. Ah. But because of our sins, our speech is in exile, not just our bodies. Speech itself is not carrying the original power. What is the original power? Well, we learned it right here. Shavmaim na asu, that God's speech creates heavens. That means a human being as an image of God can also create heavens, spiritual realms, auras, lights energy fields with just your speech. That's real speech. That's real prayer. And that's how you manifest. They, the nations, will tell of God's glory. Because it's going to get out to all of them. They're going to see it all. And even when the speech of the Jews is in exile. That means that the, the speech doesn't carry the vibration of the original and the intention of the original and the power of life force in the original of those letters and, and words and sentences. You know, it, it says in the Midrash that, that it, back in the day when they first got the Torah, if they had a cut on their hand or something, they could whisper a verse. They would whisper verses to their body, to heal their bodies. But when we're in exile, our speech doesn't is hidden, that power, that healing creative power in the words and in the letters. Now you hear that? You hear that door slam? <laughs> That's progress. But it says the glory of Hashem will be revealed and seen by all flesh together. The whole world, there is a day coming where everybody's going to see as one unified race. Kipi Hashem Diber, that the word of God has spoken. And what does that mean? Well, usually it means like forms of prophecy where, where a prophet says something and it happens. And we can see it in our own lives if we look, pay attention enough to our speech. But when Ki Pi Hashem Diber and all the world sees it, that's not going to be a normal day. That's going to be a transformational day. And then, when the Jewish people are redeemed, then we can say, our speech is redeemed and also as if to say Hashem himself is redeemed from his hiddenness into revelation now I don't know about you but that's a day I want to be around for that day 
I don't care how old I am. <laughs> hey, you know, I just want to be there for that day. Can you imagine if everybody had that power, that vision, that speech, how the world would change? It's not hocus pocus, it's not Disney, it's not sci-fi, it's the metaphysics of how we're made. When our truth is revealed through our speech, we're part of that, and what we say happens. Don't you want to be there? I know you do. So we're going to stop here today and continue this Torah tomorrow because there's still more to learn. Thank God there's always more to learn. And you know, when you have the 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 real desire to learn, the world is always new. And that's the secret of renewal. God bless you all. We'll see you again on all the outlets.